After the kingdom was split, after Suleiman, the kingdom was split into Israel and Judea. So whoever's from Judea or, or from the tribe was known as a Jew. And then it became the name of a, of a religion. Yeah. But it became the name of the race. Yeah, sort of, um... yeah the, the, the race and the religion. Yeah. So it's not actually what, what Abraham followed, what Isaac followed, what Ismail followed. Then when it comes to Christianity, mm. Jesus himself wasn't a Christian and he didn't teach Christianity. Rather, according to the Bible, I believe it's in the book of Acts, it mentions that the disciples were first called Christian in a place called Antioch, which is modern day Turkey. And they were called this as a, a label by idol worshippers. So why I would say Islam came first, which obviously you're going to say, well, you would say that you're a Muslim. Islam, the word means submission. So we believe that all of the messengers, they came with the same way of life, the same religion, which was submit yourself to God. God is one, worship him alone and follow the way of the messenger sent at your time, which is Islam. So Muslims, we will say that Abraham was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim and the last messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon all of, all of them, was a Muslim because they all submitted to God. Like the Christians, they say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is submission. And Jesus, he submitted to God. So the thing we believe, this is, this is the, the, the God is one. All the messengers taught this. Like there's, a, there's an interesting verse in Quran because you'll find the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, even the idol worshippers in, uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, they all claim to follow the way of Abraham. Because yeah. obviously Abraham is held in high esteem and respect because of his sacrifice, right. because of his uh, willingness to obey God, submit to God. Yeah. So everyone claims him. So yeah. the Quran, it mentions in chapter three in the Quran, it mentions uh, in the Arabic, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا Musliman wa ma kana min al-mushrikeen inna awla al-nasa bi Ibrahim al-ladhina tabi'uhu wa hadha al-nabiyu wa al-ladhina amanu wallahu waliyu al-mu'mineen It's two verses, it mentions that Abraham was not a Jew for the reason, for the reasons I gave you Yeah, absolutely Now, let Na me tell you about the, the word, I, the word if, if you don't mind, if you don't mind if, just let me finish this translating these two verses and I, I, I did talk for a long time so I will, I will listen to you So he was not a Jew he was not a Christian. Rather, Abraham was someone who he turned to God and he was a Muslim. He submitted to God and he was not an idol worshipper. Then the next verse says, the closest of mankind to Abraham is those who followed him in, in his lifetime. Those who followed this messenger, meaning the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because we say Islam is the religion of Abraham. And those who believe on Allah, the Almighty God is a protector of the believers. That's, yeah, you wanted to say. So, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, no. No, um, so Abraham, in his time, yeah. was pretty much the only person that upheld truth. Yes. Every other tribe was following their idols. Yes. And God said to him, even his father was an idol worshiper. Yes. Come out of your people. Yeah. I'll show you a land. Yeah. Through you. Yeah. I will restore my word, my principle, the truth. Yes. Through your seed. Yes. I will reveal myself. So that's the reason, purpose, if God called Abraham. Yeah. And now, of course, when God calls you, there has to be a test. Yes. In a way. Yes. To show your true heart. Whether of course. You believe so that test was, it was to tell him something that was unimaginable, basically. Uh-huh. Give him a test that's unimaginable to him, but he yes. doesn't know the actually the future prophetic meaning of that. Uh -huh, of course. Which we're going to see in the future. Uh -huh. So, and when Abraham obviously said to him, sacrifice this son that I promised you, yeah. which was Isaac, right? Yeah. Sacrifice him. Just for me. I will let you, but we don't agree with Isaac. I know, I know yeah. you know, but yeah. I, carry Ishmael on, carry was on. already gone in Hagar uh -huh. when this happened. Isaac but was already 30 there, years there's old. A problem in, there's a problem in the wording in the Bible. Okay, I'll, I'll, it says, I'll, says sacri it, Abraham was, was commanded to sacrifice his only son. Only, only son, yeah. So, 
Isaac could, in his whole life was never the only son. The only son could have only been Ishmael. Okay, here's the, where the problem is. No problem. When, when Isaac was born, yeah. God actually commanded Abraham uh -huh. to send off Hagar, which was from yeah. Egypt, yeah. from Egypt, yes. and the young Ishmael and the son, yes. that he will make him uh -huh. a great nation. Yeah. So because the promise wasn't through him, it was through Isaac. So who would, who, who would be a great nation? Mm -hmm. Ishmael. Yes. Ishmael would be a great nation. Uh -huh. That's what God promised him. Uh -huh. But the promise through the sea yeah. is not through him, but Isaac. Uh -huh. Because Ishmael came from the Hagar, which was a maid, uh -huh. and not the wife of Abraham. Right? Inc incorrect. The incorrect. wife of Abraham was Sarah. According to you the, agree? No. According to the... Hagar was a maid. Yeah. But according to the Genesis, yeah. Abraham took Hagar as his wife. The, the Bible is very explicit that Hagar, she was a maid, but she yeah. became the wife. Okay, let me, tell you, let me tell you how it happened. Let me tell you how it happened. But the, the Bible uses the word wife. And it wasn't, it, wasn't, uh, it was a handmaid. So let me she tell, was, let, but it became wife. Ca carry on. Let me, Abraham had other concubines, but let me, uh -huh. let me tell you how it happened. Uh -huh. God promised Abraham that, because when Abraham was saying to him, look, you haven't blessed me with a seed. Yes, a child. yes, yes, yes. And God said to him, I will bless you with uh, a child. Yes. Right? But here, Abraham's wife, Sarah, said, look, we are getting old. Yes. Why don't you take our maid and have a baby through him, and, um, through, through, the, uh, through our maid? Yeah? Yes. And Abraham went and had a baby. Yes. After marrying he Hagar. Said, no, he didn't marry her. If, if I anyway, that's, that's not even the point. The point I'm, I'm getting, I'll get to the point anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, he said, take your only son and sacrifice him yeah. in the mountain. Is there a possibility to go there too, or is it not right? I don't mind. Just there, just there. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm listening to you. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. Oh, you're coming, bringing the conversation here, yeah? Yes. Sorry. Oh. So, I'm with, I'm with you. Yeah. So, you, so you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, you said to me, okay, so, take it to the mountain, take uh, yeah. the sun to the mountain. I'll show you where it's sacrificed. The, the region, the mountain was actually called Mount Moriah. Can I just mention something very quickly? In Genesis 16, mm. verse 3, yeah. and Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, as you said, after Abraham had, had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, yeah. and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So Hagar was a, was a wife. She was, given, she was a maid servant, but she was the wife. So Ismail is the firstborn and the only son. Oh, I mean, and see, 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 let me just say, right. even if you look at Jacob, yeah. he had two wives who were sisters and he yeah. had two handmaidens. So the children of Israel, they come from two handmaidens anyway. Yeah, they, 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 you know, so, back in those days. So biblically, it has no significance on who is your firstborn. Firstborn normally gets the inheritance. Yeah. Right? The firstborn normally gets the inheritance. And will always be the only son and remember, until the second one is born. Remember, Jake, yeah. uh, remember um, Jacob. Yeah was senior by Esau, but the promise came from Jacob. The inheritance came from Jacob. You know, remember? Yeah, yeah, I'm with okay, you. Okay, but here, so when, they take, when, when Abraham went to the mountain, yeah. the region is called Mount Moriah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. God gave him a test. Yes. Sacrifice your son. Your only son. The only son. Now, do uh, you know, who, do you who, know who, who was, was... Who was the only son? Could, could Isaac be ever considered the only son? Not that's, literally. That's the, that's the child of promise. No, but, but because what we are talking about is but, the inheritance. But, but can can Isaac be ever considered the only son? The only begotten son, yes. N not begotten. Mm. The the verse in the Old Testament says that Abraham was commanded to sacrifice his, his only son. It's, it right. mentions Isaac, but it does mention. I yeah, but here's here's mm. the thing, yeah. What God was God was not God was not really. He was not trying to tell us um, how the, the purpose of that verse yeah. is the lineage. Yeah. of what God is trying to do in the future, yeah. which is the promise yeah. and restore, the restoration of yeah. truth. Yeah. Now, through that lineage, yeah. Isaac, yeah. then came, of course, Jacob and all the, and all the rest. Yeah, all down to Jesus. All down to Jesus. Yeah. Now, 
do you believe that the word now the word came through Moses yeah that's Genesis all this word of God came through Moses which was from the line of Isaac right this this is this is the the point I have in my mind yes see we as, as you know as Muslims we believe in Abraham we believe in Moses we believe in Jesus but do you, do you believe that Moses came from the line of Isaac Yes, yes, without okay. a doubt. From, from, the, from, the time of, um, from the time of Isaac yeah. and Jacob, yeah. all of the messengers yeah. sent by God, David, Suleiman, Zachariah, they all came from this line. Right. But, Brilliant. Brilliant. but the, the thing I want to just bring to your attention is, or the problem we have, we don't see that the Old Testament is a reliable authority. So, so you believe it's been corrupted? Yes, yeah, so, so the thing is, if if people who were corrupt, according to their own book, if they were responsible to carry this book and transmit this book, and then we find things in there where there's changes, or we find things which, was, which has been placed in their favor, that is only through Isaac, that is not through Ismail. Because what's interesting, I mean, I, I can quote the verses if you want. When it talks about the, the promised land, which you mentioned in the beginning, in Genesis 12, in Genesis 15, I believe in 17 or 18, mm -hmm. and then in Genesis 28. Mm. When you look, firstly, in Genesis 12, the promise is actually made to the offspring of Abraham without specifying Ishmael or Isaac. When you come to Genesis 15, mm. the promise is now, is, it becomes specific. It's no longer what, the, what we call Israel today. It's from the Nile, the great river in, in Egypt, the Nile, to the Euphrates. This is, this is the land which is promised. When you come to Genesis 17 or 18, it yeah. now makes it specific yeah. that the land, will be, the land is promised to Abraham and his descendants. Yeah. Then when you go down to Genesis, it, it now becomes it's only specific to Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob. And then the Old Testament continues this way. One of the problems with this is, it's, it's, it, has, it has an error in it, which can't, cannot be from God. Because it says that the land was promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we know for a fact, biblically, biblically historically, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob never had control or dominion over that land. That's one thing. Also, when we look in history, the only descendants of Abraham to ever control that area until today was the descendants through the line of Ishmael, the Arabs, the Muslims. So when you quoted, uh, I think it's Genesis 17, that I will make this, I will, yeah. it mentions that Ishmael, yeah. I, will, I will make a great, a great nation, yeah. but the promise is only for Isaac. Yeah. When you say a great nation, yeah. if you look, the... Even, even uh, Jewish scholars, rabbis, they've said the only time the children of Ishmael, the Arabs became great, mm. was in the seventh century. When the Prophet Muhammad uh, came and the Arabs, they conquered the Arabian Peninsula, or they, the Muslims conquered the Arabian Peninsula, then they went on to conquer uh, the Byzantine Empire and they conquered Persia and they conquered this land which was promised to Abraham. Okay. The children of Israel have never controlled, never controlled the area from the Nile to the Euphrates. It's only the children of uh, Ishmael who control that land. So, right. So the, la the land of Canaan, right? Yeah. Okay. Can I, so can I ask you? Yeah. So, so the, you believe that, of course, the word of God has been corrupted on the line, down the line, basically. Yeah. Do you believe that God is God powerful enough to preserve this earth? Because yeah, without a doubt. Yeah? But he's, how come he's not powerful enough to preserve his word? Oh, definitely he is. Definitely he is. So, how can a, a mighty God allow uh -huh. his word to be corrupted? Okay. Because the thing is, if a... This happens whenever in history a messenger was sent mm. and the people were called to worship the one true God. Whenever the message was lost, forgotten, or even changed, then God, by his mercy, Allah would send another messenger to correct it. But I mean, the Quran makes it very clear that the, the Bible or the, 
the, the revelation given to Moses, to David and to Jesus yeah. has been corrupted. But I, I can demonstrate it to you but very how, clearly. How can God, how can yeah. the mighty God who is able to preserve the sun, the moon and the stars, yeah. how is he not able to preserve his holy word? That's I, a problem. I, I, I can return the question to you. Mm. Can God protect all his prophets and messengers? Yes. Were prophets and messengers killed? Yes. Are you saying so that? Not, are you saying that, are you, I know, but were some. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, Jesus, according to the New Testament, yeah. he accused the children of Israel of yeah. killing their prophets and yeah. rejecting their prophets. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. are we saying that God is not able to protect those prophets He's or those messengers? But, yeah. But here's, here was the yeah. purpose. That was their way of glorifying God. It was a sacrifice. They gave their life uh -huh. because of love. The yeah. love they have for God. They yeah. gave their life. But God couldn't have protected them? He did when he had to, but uh -huh. as a way yeah. of glorifying God, they uh -huh. laid down their lives. Yeah. But God was able uh -huh. to protect them. Of Elijah, course. God protected Elijah, right? Uh -huh. yes. yes. Elijah, God protected him uh -huh. and so many other prophets because that was not their calling. Some prophets were called to actually give their uh -huh. life. Yes. And some were just slaughtered by the children of Israel out of their, re uh, their rebelliousness and their, yeah. as you call it, stiff-necked. Yeah. Let me give you a verse. So this is Exodus chapter 6. Okay. It mentions, um, so this is verse 3. Hmm. So this is what the Jews and the Christians believe that God spoke to Moses. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says, And I appeared unto Abraham, mm -hmm. unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, mm -hmm. by the name of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But by my name Jehovah mm -hmm. was I not known to them. So this is, so the verse before said, and God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Yeah. You know this Lord, I mean, we can look it up, but when you have a, a Bible with Lord, mm. in all in capitals, mm. it's referring to Jehovah yeah. or Jehovah, yeah. how, according to how people pronounce yeah. it. Yeah. So this verse is very clear. Yeah. That Abraham is, uh, sorry, Moses is being told yeah. that God is saying, I appeared to Abraham, to yeah. Isaac and Jacob yeah. by the God name Almighty. of God Almighty, mm -hmm. but by the name Jehovah. Yeah. Was I not known to them? Yeah. Okay. So, so this is very clear. Yeah. Now, when we go to Genesis uh, chapter 13, yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 4. Yeah. Unto the place of the altar, yeah. which he had made there at first, mm -hmm. and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The word Lord here is. Yeah. Abraham called on the name of mm -hmm. Jehovah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. If we go to Genesis 14, mm -hmm. uh, verse, I believe, 22. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, mm -hmm. I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. The word here, Lord, is Jehovah, mm -hmm. the most high God, the uh, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. So here we have a problem. Right. The book of Exodus is telling Moses yeah. that God is saying, mm -hmm. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, mm -hmm. but only you have I given the name, yeah. revealed the name, made you aware of the name Jehovah. Yeah. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob never knew this name. But when, but when we go back to the book of Genesis, Abraham called on the name Jehovah. Let me tell you why that was written. Yeah. Do you know who wrote the book of Genesis? You know who I, wrote it? I, I, let me tell you. I know who the Jews and the Christians say who wrote it. Who do you think wrote it? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. No, we, because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't tell us who wrote it. Mo Moses. It doesn't say that Moses wrote Genesis. But, okay. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. let's, 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 take, let's work with it. Let's work with that. Yeah. Why that was written that way? Because yeah. God was trying to make his name established. Uh -huh. Right? To the generations that are coming afterwards. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that Abraham said the name of the Lord. It, it he very, knew him as God. No, it, it clearly says that Abraham called on the name called Jehovah. On the name of the Lord. But it no, it, it says Jehovah. I showed you the yeah, Hebrew. Yeah, 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 Jehovah, yeah. yeah. He called on the name of Jehovah. The, basically, this, yeah. this, writer yeah. of this, this writer of this verse yeah. is talking to us. Yeah. They, he called on the name of God that we know because there were so many people claiming God. And he used the name Jehovah. Jehovah. Not, not Elohim. Well, Elohim. Abraham. Yeah. Abraham. And it they says that Abraham used the name. It specifically says it. Yeah. 
if you understand the concept yeah. of, of literature, yeah? Yeah. When it's like I can take you to the book of Genesis, yeah. um, I think it's chapter four. Okay. He said that um, um, what's his name? Um, Abel and Cain. Cain. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Cain killed Abel. Yes. And then he ran to the land of Nod. Yes. There was nowhere called the land of Nod then. God. But, God. The, but the writer. Oh no, I believe the land of Dan, yeah. The writer yeah. is actually telling you now, generations after, the name of the land of Nod, which was way after the generations of Cain. But we now in this generation know that name, that land as Nod. No, but the problem. So he's yeah. writing to us. Ah, but you yeah. understand what I'm trying but to say? The problem there is that, for example, I can give you examples where. Uh, it refers to lands mm. which were not called that land until after Joshua. Until after. After Joshua. Yeah. Which would mean that Moses never wrote it. I can give you so many examples. But, the, but here, I, what I mentioned in Exodus, yeah. God is clearly saying, or it's reported that God's saying to Moses, mm. by the name Jehovah, I was not known to them. Yes. When you go back to Genesis, yes. it said Abraham called on the name Jehovah. He called on the name yeah. of our Lord. Basically, yes. if I, what I'm trying to tell you, the, the writer of this verse yeah. is talking to the believe in us yes. that believe in Jehovah. Yeah. He called on the name of Jehovah. He's yeah. not calling on the name of another God, just in yeah. case you think Abraham was calling another God. No, but he God. said he used the name Jehovah. That's how he's going to say it. Uh -huh. but in that day, Abraham didn't say uh -huh. Jehovah because he never yeah. knew God as Jehovah. Okay. He knew him as the God, Almighty God. Uh -huh. But the writer is now trying to tell you that yeah. he called on the name of that God that we know. Uh -huh. God. Yeah. He didn't say Abraham didn't call him the Lord because he didn't know him by uh -huh. that name. Yeah. But when the writer is talking to you, what Abraham did, uh -huh. he's trying to tell you that he called on the God that we know because there were so many gods being contended in that time. Do you do you think? that you're given the explanation mm. based purely and simply on what is written? Or do you think that your, your belief is given the explanation? It's based on literature, yeah. culture, context. Uh -huh. If you actually study the, of the, the context and the literature, yeah. the writing, the ways they write yeah. in those days. The ways who wrote? The, the, the scholars in that time, in that time, I wouldn't call them scholars, but the writers, what, whatever, the scribes. Whatever Hebrew writing do you have to compare it with from, from 13 uh, centuries BC, BCE? Do you know the Dead Sea Scrolls? Have you heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Do you but, know the Septuagint? Do but, you know, uh, but the Septuagint is Greek. Hmm? The Dead Sea Scrolls is, is 200 Greek, years. Jewish it's, writers. it's 200 years before Jesus. The Dead Sea Scrolls, they say, mm. was written between 200 mm. years before Jesus mm. to 100 years after him. Mm. So you can't use that to judge. Have you heard the Book of Enoch? Have you heard about that? Yes. You heard of it? Yes. The Book of Enoch? Yes. That was way before even... Um, no, it's written, most, most scholars say it was written way after. They, they believe it's a forgery. They believe it's a fake. I mean, you could... Do you, it's do not, it's do not you know that Job, yeah. the Book of Job yeah. is even older? Than what? Than the, Genesis. Yeah, that, that, that the time of the writing of Genesis. Yeah, that's the problem. So, so that most biblical scholars will say that we don't know who wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, the Pentateuch. But you don't we don't know who wrote it. But no, they don't know who wrote it. But they they believe it was written after the exile, like maybe Even Exodus. Yeah, maybe 700, 800 years after. Yeah, I can give you so many examples. And and then and they say it's written by from multiple sources. And someone came later and edited it. Look, let me, but, let me but, give you but, a, but another a, break. But do, you know, do you know what? Let, let me tell you what. When let, that's the way that Satan creates the seed of doubt. Do you, let, know, let do you me, know how Adam yeah, fell? Yeah. Adam fell because when uh -huh. God gave him a word, yeah. Satan came to him and said, Ah, that's not the word of God. Yeah. That's been corrupted. Uh -huh. This is the word of God. And do you know what happened to him? Whether he believed that? He died. Mm -hmm. So the way that Satan destroys our yeah. soul yeah. is by putting a seed of doubt. Uh -huh. This is not the word of God. See, and if you check the yeah. word of God, yeah. it is very consistent to this day. Because if you, I study the prophecies, uh -huh. I study prophecies, okay. and every prophecy has been fulfilled by mostly who? Christ. Okay, okay. See, see, the thing is, even on that point, mm. if you have uh, New the authors of the New Testament, mm. okay, they have a belief. Mm. And when they're writing the Gospels, mm. they are basing it on what they read 
from the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint. So they are writing things which they believe into the story. Mm. And they are, they are misquoting the Old Testament as well. This is established. But let me give you a very brief example. Look. So this is Genesis chapter 35. Mm. And it mentioned um, in, in verse 10, Genesis 35, 10. God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Mm. Uh, thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, mm. but Israel shall be thy name, and he called his name Israel. Mm. So this verse, the clear, plain reading, mm. without being a Muslim, without being a Jew, without being a Christian, it just says that God has told Jacob that I'm going to call you Israel, mm -hmm. and no longer will you be known as Jacob. Mm. Okay. When we go to Genesis uh, 46, Uh, verse 2, mm. and God, so this is 46, we, first we read from 35, 35, mm. God said, I'm changing your name Jacob to Israel, and you will no longer be known as Jacob. Mm. So Genesis 46, obviously 11 chapters later, mm. and God spoke unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am. So we have, a, we have a verse where God is saying, you will no longer be known as Jacob. Yeah. I'm going to only call, you only refer to Israel. When we come 11 chapters later, yeah. according to the author, God is calling Jacob, Jacob, and mm. Jacob answers. Mm. This is why we would say, there's, there's a problem here, this cannot be from God. Like, when we go to Deuteronomy chapter yeah. 34, yeah. Uh, verses five and six, yeah. it mentions about the death of Moses. It mentions the burial of Moses and then it makes a very interesting statement. It says, and nobody until this day knows about the burial place of Moses. So this day, so Moses never wrote this and it's mentioned until this day. And when you go to Genesis, uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 34, so that, that was Deuteronomy 5, uh, 34 verses 5 and 6. When you go to Deuteronomy 34 verse 10, it mentions, and there has not appeared in the children of Israel until this time a prophet like Moses. This wording shows you very clearly it was written after. So our point is, we believe that Moses received revelation. Yeah. We believe he was sent as a messenger. We believe Jesus was sent as a messenger and he received revelation. Yeah. But all of these, uh, this revelation, the responsibility was given to the people. Yeah. and they did not fulfill their responsibility. Hence why another messenger came, hence why another messenger came. Even Jeremiah chapter 8, mm. uh, verse 8, I believe, he criticized the scribes mm. who were attributing to God that which he did not say. Mm. So therefore, what's happened after the time of Jesus, 600 years later, another messenger has come. Mm. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mm. from the line of Ishmael, so from the descendants of Abraham, and he's came with the same message. God is one, worship him alone. He has no partners, he has no son. There is no tr trinity, there is no uh, human sacrifice. You have to worship God alone and follow the messenger sent to you. And mm. the Quran, which we have, mm. has been preserved. So if you believe that these are potentially not from God, yeah. how then do you draw truth from it? How can you draw truth from what is corrupted? That's a very good question. Mm. I will tell you, mm. based on the Quran, mm. uh, chapter 5, ayat 48, mm. it mentions, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمَحَيْمِنٌ عَلَيْهِ It mentions, uh, and verily we have sent down to you, meaning we believe this is Allah speaking to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have sent down to you a book in truth, confirming that which came before you from the books and the Muhaymin on Ali, it is a judge over it. So the Quran is a judge over the previous books. So for example, so basically we divide everything into three. Anything which is in the, the books which the Jews and the Christians have today, yeah. if it agrees with the Quran and the Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad we yeah. accept it. Yeah. Sending of Moses, sending of Abraham, that God is one, yeah. that Jesus was sent to the children of Israel, etc, etc. Yeah. We accept it. Yeah. If you, secondly, if you have something in the Bible 
which the, the Quran contradicts and negates, mm. such as God having sons, such as uh, Jesus being God, such as Jesus dying for the sins of mankind, okay. such as uh, the Prophet Lot committing incest with his two daughters, uh, the slander against Noah that he he became drunk and he was uh, naked in front of his son, so he cursed his grandson, uh, accusing Solomon of uh, practicing idol worship. So covered their sins, their imperfections. No, these are messengers. These are the best of people. They they never committed these sins. Like, do you believe there is any? Do you believe that there is a perfect man ever? Let, let me just come to the last point. I, 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 I've got what you said. So, anything which is in the the Bible, which is a f confirmed by the last revelation, the preserved revelation of the Quran, we accept it. Anything which goes against it, we reject it. Mm. Then if you have something in the, in the books of the Jews and the Christians, which is neither affirmed or negated in the Quran or the Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, we withhold. As for a perfect man, what do you mean by a perfect man? A perfect, without flaws, infallible, perfect before, perfect in every way, righteous. Never, never sin, no sin in their life. See, the thing is, from, from Adam to, to when now. It, when it comes to all the messengers, yeah. we believe all the messengers in delivering their message, yeah. they are faultless. Whatever they were commanded to deliver, they delivered it. But their life, what about their lives? General is the messengers are, are sinless. They may commit, uh, make errors, they may fall into minor sins, but they don't commit major sins and they don't continue upon on minor sins. You know, the word says, behold, all man yeah. has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. Because we don't know the God. We, we think that we serve uh -huh. some God that's just able to look at sin and it's uh -huh. okay, you forgive us because he's merciful. God is a spirit. God is sin, not merciful. Let, let, let me, let me yeah. tell you what sin is like in the eyes of God. Yeah. You have a perfect water, pure water. Yeah. If I pour petrol, yeah. just a tiny yeah. ounce of petrol, yeah. it's no longer pure. Uh -huh. That's how sin is in the eyes of God. Uh -huh. So no man, we know that we have that petrol in us. Uh -huh. No man is pure before God. Then how, how can you be perfect before God? Okay. So from our aspect, I, I know your point is. Your point is that God, the second person of the Trinity, came down as Jesus, a sinless man, and died for the sins of mankind. That's, that's, that's your, the Christian perspective. For us, is mankind, we commit sins, we have shortcomings. Allah mentions very clearly, خُلُقُ الْإِنسَانَ دَعِيفَ Mankind is being created weak. But for us, because the Creator is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most kind, when we turn to Him and we repent from our sins, then He will forgive us. And when a person sincerely repents, then he becomes sinless like the day his mother gave birth to him. We don't have uh, original sin where a baby is born in the state of sin or carrying the sin of Adam. We believe every man is responsible for themselves. But when we, when we turn to the Creator and repent, then he accepts repentance. We don't believe that an innocent person has to die for us. Do you believe that when Adam sinned, that's why death came into the world? No. Oh, so you believe that Adam was was it always going to die, whether he sinned or not? I mean, the, the Quran, chapter 67, verse 2, it says, الَّذِي خَلَقُ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا It mentions that, you know, he is, the, he is the one who created death and life in order to test us. Who is the best in deeds? So we believe this life is a test and we were created to be tested in this world. One day, all of us have to die every soul shall taste of death and we'll, then we will, we will be returned to our Creator and He will judge us. We, we don't believe that Adam was created. See, even this concept is not known to Jews. It's mm. only a, a, a concept from Paul that Adam committed a sin, then death came into this world and because of this death, everyone is distanced from God and we cannot come close to God except by God coming down Himself and becoming a sacrifice so for us. How does the fall of men, how did the fall of men come into being? How did the fall, the sinful world that we live in? Because if you and, if yeah. you and I agree that God is a perfect God, yes, that He created everything perfect. A yes. perfect God would not create this chaos that we see. How did this chaos, the sinful nature of so, man came about? Do you, so when you talk about, because we believe that Allah created us, yeah. 
and he created our actions as well. He created evil as well. Yes. So, do you think that evil exists without God creating it? Do you think there are things? Do you think there's things that exist without God creating it? Is there a creator other than God? What is evil? Evil is the opposition of God. Yeah, but the the ability for someone to sin, and the, the choice for someone to sin, was it created by God or not? So God cannot create sin, but sin can come into existence. Does sin, the, does sin exist? Sin exists. So yeah. you believe something in the heavens and the earth exists, which God didn't create? Sorry? So, Do you believe that something exists yeah. in the sky and in the earth, which God didn't create? So sin is not like a human being. That is, yeah. the, Sin is actually an act yeah. that is opposed, opposed to the righteousness of God. Yeah, but as Muslims, we believe that, that Allah created us mm. and our actions. He created our choices. He created our ability to, cho to choose our choices. Create, you cannot yeah. create... He cannot create something that is opposed to his nature. So, did he create, basically, did, did he create the devil? You said, do you know that the devil was a fallen angel? No. I mean, Islamically, we don't believe you this. You don't believe that? No, because we believe angels can never disobey God. They're created only to worship God and obey God. So Christianity they, teaches, but did how, God, how did, does, did does God create, but according to you, God created the devil. Even if he created him as an angel, did God give him the ability to fall? Because angels are fallible. So how, so how did in the, in the Quran then yeah. how did the devil, how so God created him as this this is my enemy I'll create my enemy is that how no how, how did he create? According so in Islam we have two things we have the Quran, and we have the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. For us both of this have authority, and we have uh, and when it comes to the the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, we have a method of. Um, Grading, what is authentic, what is fabricated, what is uh, weak, etc. But according to the Sunnah, we have, um, it mentions three types of creation. There's human beings, mm. which were created from Adam, created from soil. We have angels, which were created from light. Mm -hmm. And we have something called jinn, jinn created from fire. Mm. So Iblis or Satan was, a, was from the jinn, he was created from fire. According for the to the purpose, Quran, for the pur what, what was his purpose? Allah mentioned in the Quran very clearly, I believe chapter 51, Al, uh, It mentioned that, ma that Allah said, I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me. So Iblis, uh, Satan, he was created to worship God. He had the ability to worship God okay. and he chose to disobey him. Okay. When, according to the Quran, when when Allah created Adam السلام, he asked the angels to bow down okay. and those and Iblis, yeah. who is Satan, to yeah. bow down to Adam. Yeah. Not in, uh, in terms of worship, but in terms of respect, in, in terms of honor. The angels, they bowed down. Iblis refused to. And he said, I'm better than him. You have created me from fire and you created him from uh, the earth. So I'm better than him. So because of this pride and arrogance, the devil was thrown out. And then he, then he took a promise and, he's, and he said, until the day of judgment, I will continue to try and lead mankind astray. Okay, so that was the what I wanted to understand. Yes. Was he created an evil person or was he already created perfect, but he chose? Not perfect, he was created with free will, free like exactly. mankind. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he was, he was not worship, worship God. Yeah. Yes. He worshiped God. So he chose evil. Yes. Exactly. And so he that, had the ability, and God gave him the ability. That's every creature. He had that, that God capacity. Has, yeah. Every creature. So, so God, God has created that capacity. Yes. Just like us as well. God we gave have us will, our yeah. free will. Yeah. To either to choose right yeah. or to choose wrong. Uh -huh. Now, are you, are you perfect? No. So you have sins in your life? Of course, without a doubt. Jesus Christ said that. Even when a man hates his brother without a cause, he's already yeah. committed murder in the eyes of God. According to the so, Gospel of Matthew, yeah. and he, and he, but then he says, and even if you look at a woman with lust, you should take out your eye. You've already, no, you've already committed adultery. And you should take out your eye. It's better for if, you to take out your eye than the to eye end in the hellfire. Yeah. The eye offends you, yeah. take out your eye. Yeah. So what he's trying to show you is that our perfection yeah. in the eyes of God yeah. is flawed. 
Uh -huh. Man cannot stand before God in judgment because we do not have His holiness in us. And God, yeah. mm -hmm. God cannot yeah. say, "Oh, I forgive you." Okay, come, come and sit down. Uh, yes, you. It's like if we go to a courtroom. Uh -huh. Yeah. I killed somebody. Yeah. And I come to the judge and I say, "Judge, I've, I've always been a good guy. You know, yeah. I, I pray five times a day." Uh -huh. God, the judge will say to you, "Yeah, perfect. That's fine. I understand. Uh -huh. But you killed somebody. You have to pay for this crime." And then the judge says, and then the judge says, "But well, I want to forgive you, so I'm going to take my son, who's innocent, and I'm going to punish him for your crime." Okay. That's that's the concept of Christianity. Okay. You understand? Bri you understand? Bri that's okay. Let me explain to you that concept. Yeah. An innocent you, person you have, you have bearing a, other people's sins. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a account. Yeah. yeah? You yeah. have your your we, yeah. we everybody's given like a credit in this country, right? Yeah. Like credit score. Your credit score is absolutely trash. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Your house, you're gonna lose your house. Uh -huh. You incur in debt every single day. Uh -huh. Rates, everything is going up. Yeah. And they're gonna take over everything that you have. Uh -huh. they, they go to the courtroom, they say to you, this man. He owes the bank this, he owes the mortgage is gone, yeah. his credit score, he can't get anything, and he's working 10 times a day, he's never going to be able to pay all this back. Uh -huh. The judge says to him, okay. Are you, are you, are you, are you comparing the almighty, most merciful I'm God to, give, to, the, to the interest based banking system? I'm trying to give you a narrative because we are fallen, yeah. we, are, we are so fallen in our nature, we don't have a narrative to compare God, but we can only compare the existence uh -huh. and this reality according to what we know. But God has created us this way, that we are weak, we are deficient, yes. we are dependent upon Him. Yeah. And He is the most merciful, the most kind, the most forgiving. Yeah. So, so, so what it is, I think sometimes in Christianity, they, uh, they portray or they paint a picture where you, there's two ways. One is Moses brought a law and you have to fulfill every single law, which no man can do. Yep, and if you do not fulfill, and that's the only way you can be saved. Right. Or you can merely uh, rely upon grace. In Islam, we don't have this concept. In Islam, we have commandments from God and we have prohibitions. And a person should strive to fulfill the commandments of God. And a person should strive to stay away from those things which are prohibited. And we, but we have a a system in life, we have laws for everything. So are but, you confident that you will make it to heaven if, when you pass away from this well, life? Let me finish. Maybe this will explain it. Because we're not relying upon our deeds. A person will enter into paradise through their deeds. But, we're not, but not because of the deeds. If I give an example like the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he told his companions, yeah. he said, none of you will enter paradise because of your good deeds, your actions. So they were surprised. Okay. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, even you. Because for, for us, the Messenger was the best example and was the most complete person in terms of obedience to God, worshipping God, etc. The Messengers in all times. That's why we don't believe that Solomon uh, worshipped idols. We don't believe that Lot committed incest. We don't believe that David committed adultery and then murdered the person, etc. Et so, th so they said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, yes, even me, unless Allah covers me in his mercy. So we believe a person strives their best to obey God and stay away from the prohibitions. And that's something which is beneficial to us. It doesn't benefit God in any way. If we all obey God, all mankind from the first to the last, it's not going to increase the greatness of God. If we all disobey God, yeah. and reject him and turn away from him. It's not going to decrease him in any way. Mm. This is for our benefit. Mm. But the point is, we believe a person will enter into paradise because of the mercy of the Creator. But that mercy is brought about by a person striving to be good. But no one can reach perfection in anything. There's nothing we do which is perfect. Right. Everything we do has shortcomings. But it doesn't mean the Christian concept that God had to come down, become a man, and die for our sins. Mm. That's, that's, that's where we differ. Mm. But, I mean, there, there's so much things to talk about. But I, So let me, let me, this no last, problem, no last, last few things. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, you believe is coming back, right? That in the Muslim, right? In the Islamic um, belief, you believe yes. that Christ Very, is coming back. Yes, and we, and we believe he was the Messiah and born from the Virgin Mary. Yeah. And he was a prophet only to the children of Israel, not to all mankind. Okay, let me ask you these questions then. Why is Jesus Christ, out of all the prophets, why is he the one that's coming back to, to set up the kingdom of God on earth? Okay, firstly, the kingdom of God is a separate issue. Why to destroy the wicked one? How do you how do you believe it in your scripture? How do you believe? What do you believe is coming to do? Uh, five things. Perhaps if I, if I finish them, then you can comment. Firstly, uh, the, the prophet the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in authentic hadith in numerous books of hadith, he mentioned that that Jesus, the son of Mary, will descend. He will descend in. Uh, near the white minaret in the, the mosque in Damascus. When he will come down, he, he will do five things. He will break the cross. He will break the cross. Meaning this idea that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of mankind, he will break this cross. And so this idea is wrong. Okay. He will kill the pig. To show this idea that Paul has done away with the law and you don't have to follow the law anymore because Jesus became a curse for you and it's and it is written that whoever is hung on a tree is cursed etc. Jesus will negate this belief. He will kill the Antichrist. There's a, a concept in Islam, uh, it's called Jizya. You may have heard of it. Jizya. Jizya, this is, we're not talking about terrorism, we're talking about Islamic warfare what's called, known as jihad. All religions have a concept of jihad. All democracy, communism, all nations have armies. They have a concept of uh, defense and offense. So Islam, we have this. For, for, with a Muslim ruler, it can't be an independent person. It's not someone living in England or because we are under the law of this land. We've agreed to live here, we live under the law. So someone here can't, cannot do this. But you have a, a Muslim ruler, he sends out an army. When he sends out an army to another land, mm -hmm. according to Islam, the people have three choices. They can embrace Islam. If they accept Islam, then the land is theirs, they rule by Islam, that's it. As, as happened in, in history. Second choice is, they say, we don't want to embrace Islam. They can pay jizya. Jizya is a tax where their, their lives are protected. The Muslims are responsible to protect them and take care of them. And with this, they can follow Christianity. They can follow Judaism. They follow their own way of life. That's why in the Muslim lands, like even Palestine, uh, in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, you have churches and synagogues from hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago. You have Christian and Jewish communities. Obviously now things are difficult, but so you have jizya. Last, if a person doesn't accept that, then it's warfare. This happens. But when Jesus comes back, jizya is finished. Either you embrace Islam or it's warfare, which is a Christian concept as well. The Armageddon is going to be a war. In the, in the Gospel of Luke chapter nine, uh, 19, verse 27, Jesus gives a parable where he says that when the king returns, he will order the slaughter of all those people who don't accept him. Jesus given a parable about his return. So this is a, a Christian concept, but Islam, we say Jesus, when he comes back, mm. people have the choice of Islam or the sword. Mm. And then uh, lastly, Jesus will rule the earth based on the Quran and Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad That's what Jesus... Okay, so these but, are but, the five things he's coming back to do. But, but the important question you mentioned, why Jesus? why Jesus? Why not Moses? Why not Noah? Why not Abraham? Because Jesus is the most misunderstood Prophet. Because when he came, clearly I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was sent to them. They rejected him. He was sent as a Messiah. They rejected him. And to, the, to this day, the Jews, they're still waiting for the Messiah to come, who we believe will be the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus returns, it's to show them that he was the Messiah sent to them. Mm -hmm. okay. Then you had those people, after Jesus was taken up, not in his lifetime, after he was taken up, people began, began to declare that he was God. 
They took the, the Roman and Greek ideas of man-god, God becoming man, God becoming down on earth, God having relationship with women in this earth, etc. This idea of uh, you have to have a, a human sacrifice to reach God, there has to be an intermediary between you and God. These are all ideas from the Greek ideas, Greek philosophy. So Jesus will come to, to show those people, I'm not God. I never told you to worship me. I'm not a sacrifice for you. So that's, that's why Jesus. That's why Jesus, and he's coming, he's coming to rule the earth, the whole yes, earth. Yes, yes. But according to Islam, yes. until the, and then the day of judgment will take place. So everybody, every, even the, the Islamic nations, yeah. everybody will serve under Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, but they won't worship Jesus. They will worship the one true God who Jesus worshipped, who Moses worshipped, who Abraham worshipped, yeah. who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or peace be upon all the messengers they worshipped. That's the concept. We don't see Christianity teaches it's, it's a it's a Greek Hellenist it's a Greek idea that God is so far and separate from His creation. That's why they believe that Jesus had to be part of God and part human to be an intermediary, because God the the God is unable to create, He's unable to judge, He's unable to interact with human beings because He's so different. That's why you have the logos. An intermediary between man and God. Is that you said? What, that's what Christian believe. Yeah, that's Christianity belief. Not, not necessarily. That's Christian. why Jesus will come and judge, and not and not the and not God. Christians don't even believe that God is so far. Do Christians believe yet God is outside of this physical world. No, but you world. believe you have to have an intermediary, isn't it? Intermediary. You can, right. The, you can't. No. You, you can't worship God directly. You have to call on the name of Jesus. You can worship God directly. Right? No, you have to call on the name of Jesus. No, you can. You have to baptize in the name of the Father, a the Son, and the Holy Abraham, Spirit. Abraham. Yeah. Right? Abraham. There's, there was. There was no name of Jesus when Abraham was around, right? Yes. But he worshipped God. Yes, as a Muslim. Now, yeah. what God did. Yeah. Is he? Like I said to you, he came to reveal his principles, his laws yeah. through Moses. He did. Yeah. And then, Moses said to them, "A prophet will come." Uh -huh. Him you shall obey. Yeah. That prophet was, although you don't believe it, that prophet that was to come was Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And Jesus Christ said, I did not come yeah. to make away with the law, but I come to magnify it, to fulfill it, uh -huh. to fulfill the law. Once he fulfilled, because you agree that nobody can fulfill that law, nobody in, in this life can fulfill that uh -huh. law, no man. Christ was able to fulfill it. Because uh -huh. why? He was born of a virgin. Why was he born of a virgin? Uh -huh. He did not have the transcendent sin of Adam in him. Was he, was, a, was, was he a descendant of David? Huh? Was he a descendant of David? He was a de descendant of David How? Through, through Mary. How? But, through Mary. Uh, but according to, according to the, the Bible, you know your descendancy, your seed, it always, it always goes to the Father. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the seed. Yeah. That's why, that's why the yeah. Holy Spirit, yeah. the Holy, which is God. So you Holy believe Spirit. if someone has a father, yeah. it means they're born sinful? Huh? If, if someone has a father, they're born with the sin. And if someone you, doesn't have a father, they're not born with the sin. You have the yeah. transcendent sin of Adam. Only through the father, not through the mother. Because the, fa the father is the, the seed comes from the man, right? Yeah. Yes? So, that, so but that's, that's a problem for you because then, then Jesus cannot be from the seed of David. He's from the line of David through the mother. Because, but look, he's not from the seed of David. Huh? He's not from the seed of he's David. He's from the line of David. But he is from the line of the David. It's how? But the Bible said, the Bible tells is he, from, is he from the seed of David? Hmm? Is he from the seed of David? We don't want to play semantics. He's from the line of, the Bible tells you. But the line only, only goes through your father. No, no, no. The, the, uh -huh. Sorry, where, where's, your, where's your father from? If I, if they might not ask. What's your, what's your nationality? What's your like, background? Me, uh, I have Russian, I have a man, it's very mixed. Yeah. And your mother, what's your mother? What about your mother? Uh, on my mother's side, there's some Russian, Isla Man. On my father's side, Eastern European, it's mixed. Yeah. But you have both lineages, right? No, but, but Islamically, your lineage only goes through your father. Islamically, according to the, according to the, according to the Bible as well, your lineage only goes through your father. No, 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 anyway, no, anyway no, regardless, no, regardless, no, regardless, regardless. So, so, Jesus came through, he was, when anything that the Bible talks about any miracle, any wonder, any sign. There's a reason for it. When but Moses split the sea, did Mary? Did Mary? Oh, let, me, let me finish. Sorry, sorry. When Moses split the sea, yes, he split the sea so that the people can escape 
yes. and escape from Pharaoh. Yes. He didn't split the sea just to say, oh, look at what I can do. Of course. He split the sea so that the people would escape. Yeah. When Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, yeah. God wasn't doing that miracle just to say, oh, look, I'm God. I can, I can, born, I can bring about a child from a virgin. So no. why, did, why did Moses place his hand on his side and bring it out shining? Is this for a purpose or just to show that he's sent by God? According to your argument, it would have to serve a purpose as well. Yeah, he did. Let, remember, Jesus Christ healed people, right? He healed people, right? Of my own self, I can do nothing. Right? He, yeah. he did so many miracles. By himself or by the power of God? By the power of God, but here's what I'm getting to. By his own power? But here's what I'm getting to. By his own power or by the power of God? Here's what I'm getting to, though. Yeah. Here's what I'm getting to. He did all those signs to show that he was sent from God, right? Yes, that's the purpose. Exactly. But what I'm talking about is the main wonder, the main sign. Yeah. Is that he was born of a virgin, which was a prophecy made in Isaiah 8. Seven. He said that the Messiah, the Messiah will Isaiah be born 7, of a virgin. Isaiah 7, verse 14. The Messiah will be one, one of a virgin, right? Really problematic for you. It doesn't matter. But Have like you I read said, it? Have you read Isaiah 7? I know. I, you, see, you see the scriptures? Let me tell yeah, you what I believe yeah. what I believe. At some point, yeah, I was born... Have my, you read, my, have, my, have my, you read Isaiah 7? Me, me, it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about a person born at that time. And, the, and he shall be called... And he shall be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. According, according to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, mean? God is with us. Was Jesus ever called Emmanuel by anyone? Yes, yes, he was. But anyway, he who? Might, he might, who? He might, he might, who? That will, we'll go into a rabbit hole. We're going to, but there's a no, point but, that but this, the, the, the thing is that this person, he will be called Emmanuel. Uh, if you read in, in your own time, yeah. read Isaiah uh, chapter 7, yeah. read all of it, and you, will, it all. and you will become, it's clear to you that this prophecy is talking about a child who will be, not be born in that time. It's not talking about a child who will be born 700 years later. Even Christian scholars, mm. what they will say, they will say yes. It's talking about a child born in that time, no, no, but also it's, it's a foreshadow, it's like a double prophecy. Someone from that time and someone from the future. Because there, Jesus, has, there has never been a, a child but, that was born of a, a, virgin, a virgin woman. Well, the, problem, the Hebrew word could be virgin and it can be a, a, a young lady. It was, it was a virgin. It, it was a, uh, not it was, in the Hebrew. Not, that, that, yeah. word, that word was talking about a, a virgin. Yeah. Because when that prophecy was fulfilled, uh -huh. Matthew, I think it was Matthew, I don't know Matthew or Luke, Confirmed Matthew, that, Matthew, Matthew, yeah, Matthew. Confirmed yeah. that that prophecy was about him. About him. Uh -huh. There was never any man born of a virgin since, since Adam. All right, so what I'm trying to get to... Therefore the Lord himself shall yeah. give you a sign. Yes. Behold, a young lady or virgin, it's translated as virgin, but it's the word virgin. is young lady, yeah, it's, it's shall conceive mm -hmm. and bear a son mm -hmm. and shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm and shall call his name Emmanuel. According to the New Testament, Jesus was called Jesus. Everyone called him Jesus. No one ever, according to the New Testament, called it Emmanuel. His mother never called it Emmanuel. This is what I said before. Just think about it. You don't have to accept it, but just think about it. The, the writers of the New Testament had beliefs, they had ideas, and they were reading from the Old Testament and putting these ideas. So when Matthew used this, yeah. it doesn't, it's not talking about Jesus because he'd be called Emmanuel. I'll give you, if you don't, if you don't mind. There's actually other prophecies about that Emmanuel. The Emmanuel is actually a name to be given to the Messiah. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, so yeah. that argument is already mute because uh -huh. the prophecy about Emmanuel is about the Messiah. Okay, let me give you this. Matthew, which you mentioned Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 15. Mm. This is talking about when Jesus was born mm. and Herod, the Edomite who became a Jew, yeah. he, he had heard that a child is going to be born, it's going to bring about his destruction. So, so Herod, according to the Bible, yeah. which has no historic evidence, he commanded that all the children in Bethlehem, the children of Israel, all the new boy, uh, born boys should be killed. So Joseph and Mary, they took Jesus into Egypt. It's only mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew. No other Gospel mentions it. It mentions in chapter 2, verse 15. And there was until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. So Matthew here is saying that this, is, this has been spoken by the Lord from a previous prophet. 
So this, he's, he's saying that Jesus is fulfilling a prophecy. Mm. Out of Egypt have I called my son. So Matthew is, is clearly saying, out of Egypt I have called my son, is referring to Jesus coming out of Egypt mm -hmm. after Herod has died. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The problem is, when we go to Hosea uh, chapter 11, mm -hmm. the Old Testament, this is what Matthew's talking about. Yeah. When Israel was a child, then I loved him, yeah. and I called my son out of Egypt. And as they called him, so they went from them, they sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incest to graven images. Yeah. So Matthew has taken a verse from Hosea, talking about the children of Israel, when they were taken out of Egypt under, uh, under Pharaoh, sorry, under Pharaoh, and he's applied it to Jesus. But the verse continues and says, and they, and they sacrificed them to Balaam. This is talking about the children of Israel. That's, that's the, see, Matthew's see, misusing the Old Testament, misusing the Old Testament. You see, here, that's, that, you see here, that, here's the thing. It, you see the Bible, the Bible, the Bible talks about, it's gonna be line upon line, precept upon precept, yeah. here a little, there a little. Yeah. Once you begin to understand scriptural prophecies, you begin to see read between the lines. To you, to the normal eye, yeah. it will seem like, oh, this is just talking about uh, somebody's taking something out of it. It's actually, it's actually a prophetic listen, word listen, that listen. you have to listen. Listen, listen, listen. When Israel was a child, yeah. then I loved him mm. and called my son out of Egypt. Yes. God here, or the author of Hosea, is saying that the Son of God who was taken out of Egypt yeah. is the tribe of Israel. And then he's mentioning what the tribe of Israel done afterwards. Yeah. As they called them, so they went from them and they sacrificed unto Balaam yeah. and burned graven images and they burned incest to graven images. It's saying basically, after I saved you, my son Israel, you, re you returned my uh, favor, my bounties upon you by worshiping other gods. Yeah. And then, and then Matthew has taken this and said he's referring to Jesus. I mean, if, if you want to base your I, salvation on this, I can, show, your, I can show you. I can show you yeah, different scriptures where yeah. it's talking about one thing, but the next line is actually talking about a prophecy to come two thousand years afterwards. To the to the normal eyes, yeah. it sounds like the verse is just reading along, but it's not. Okay, that's what the Bible. Let me show you this one, Isaiah nine. Verse 6. Mm. Most Christians know this one. Okay. For unto us a child is born. Yeah. You're aware of this one. Yeah. Unto us a son is given. Mm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, yeah. the Everlasting Father, yeah. the Prince of Peace. So Christians will say that this verse is referring to Jesus. Not, so Christ, not only Christians. But the problem is mm. the verse says he will, he will be called the Everlasting Father. You cannot believe that Jesus, the Son of God, is also the Father. This is blasphemy. This is heresy. Do you have Micah? Do you know? Can you please find Micah? Micah 5.2. Exactly. But, but so far, Hosea hasn't worked for you. Isaiah 7 hasn't worked for you. Isaiah no, 9 hasn't it, worked for you. It works, but to the, yeah. to the normal eye, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But to, to me, I understand yeah. it. But open Micah 5.2. But thou, uh, Bethlehem. Yes. I don't know this word. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Though, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yes. yet out of thee shall, shall be come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, yeah. whose goings forth have been made from old, mm -hmm. from everlasting. Okay. Yeah. From ever, do you know what that everlasting word that means? In Hebrew? Yeah. I do know, yeah. Cool. Uh, because this word, it can mean from eternity, or it can mean from old, from a long eternity. time ago. It doesn't always mean eternity. The, the word there yeah. is eternity. No, it doesn't. I'll show you the word. <laughs> I know, you know why. Let me, let me tell you. Like, I, know, I, I know you've done your research. Can I just tell I, you, can mm. I just, just, just have this in mind. Mm. Bear this in mind. Mm. Whenever you come across Christians yeah. use a prophecy from the Old Testament about Jesus, yeah. go and see, I'm not saying they're right all the time. Go and see what, how the rabbis understood Absolutely. this verse. Absolutely. Okay. Do you know that verse was used when by it, the rabbis? When, when, to, whenever, to whenever a Trinitarian mm. uses the verse in the New Testament yeah. about Jesus, yeah. go and see what the Uni, uh, Unitarians they say about the same verse. Yes. It's, it's, all, it's, all, it's, it's all based on you have a, 
a belief, yes. and then you go to the book and you interpret everything according to your beliefs. What's your name, by the way? Oh, sorry, Yusuf. Yusuf. Yeah. The, okay. Let me, let me tell you why. Everlast, you... Everlasting. Yes. So everlasting. That's how they chose to translate it here. Mm. Uh, let's see. Okay. The word is olam in Hebrew. I, I probably pronounced it wrong. Mm. It means long duration, iniquity. Uh, forever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, ancient, world, ancient time, long time, forever, always, continue existence, everlasting. So you, the problem you, is, you it, it the can concept. mean everlasting, mm. and it can mean from a long time. Like, for example, I think uh, Genesis 6. So let's, let's, let's assume, okay. you're, you're saying that it's um, from old. Let's assume. There were giants in, so this is Genesis 6 verse 4. Okay. There were giants in the earth in those days. Okay. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of the men, yeah. and they bare them children to them, yeah. and they became mighty men and were of old men of renown. Yeah. You don't translate it as everlasting here. Yeah. You don't translate it as everlasting. Yeah, but that's, 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 yeah. where, that's where context comes in. No, it's not no, context. It's no, belief. No, no, no. It's all, context. All this is, what, what is this saying yeah. here? Yeah. It's saying men of old, right? Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. He's, he's giving you a particular time. They were renowned in that time. These men were renowned in that time. Shall I tell you how Jews imp interpret this? They say that the Messiah will come from the line of David, yeah. which is an old, which is the old ancient line. No. And the Messiah will, will, his origin will be from Bethlehem because David was born in Bethlehem. The, Christ, the Christians. No, read, read that again. Read that okay. again. The Christians. Re, read it again. Read okay. It again. Read they, it again. The Christians interpreted it to say that the uh, the Messiah will be uh, eternally existing. So you have to be God, and you and he will and he will be born in Bethlehem. The, the Bible is yeah. very very. It's a you have to treat with so much delicacy. Yeah. That with any jot you miss the whole point. That's why people are lost today, uh -huh. because they fail to actually see what God is trying to say. So just read, read that okay. again. So this is uh, Micah 5 verse mm. 2. Mm. But thou, Bethlehem, yeah. and this word I don't know. I don't know if you can pronounce it better than me. Ephrata. Yes. Okay. Yes. Through thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall be he come forth unto me that is to be the ruler in Israel, yeah. who is going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So l let he's, me just... He's, go he's travel, he's going forth. So l let me explain to you how the Jews, uh, how the Christians interpret it, and how the Jews interpret it. The Christians say that the Messiah will be the ruler of Israel, okay? And he will be born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And because who's going forth have been from, from old, from everlasting. Yeah. They will say, therefore, Jesus has eternally existed with the Father. Yeah. But okay. see, he's, not that, talk, that, he's not talking about the line, his line being uh -huh. old. Do you, do you, okay. you and and, the, and the, the Jews, they said, and they use this to say that Jesus is not the Messiah, which, I, which I, we reject as Muslims. Okay. But the Jews, they say, this verse, is talking to the fact that the Messiah, who, who will rule Islam, Jesus never ruled Islam. Even Christians, most of the prophecies about the Messiah, mm. they say when Jesus comes back the second time, he will fulfill them then. He hasn't fulfilled them yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Jews say, this clearly shows he's not the Messiah. because, But they say when it comes from Bethlehem, is he will come from the line of David, because David was born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And from old, because it's an ancient line from the line of David. So the, the, here, I, I would say, you could have this interpretation, you could have that interpretation. And I don't see why one would have precedence over the other, except based on your belief. Hence, why the Quran has come, the Quran is very clear. God is one, worship him alone. Absolutely. Jesus was a, was a messenger sent by God to the children of Israel not to all mankind, and he, and he was not God, and he did not die for the sins of okay. mankind. And the final messenger came. It is, it is very important, yeah? Yeah. That we actually believe the truth, the truth. Because we know if we get it wrong... 100%. Forget, forget yeah. whatever you've made in this life, whatever uh, you've achieved, it doesn't matter. Because your I soul agree. is... Jesus Christ says, what does it profit a man 
to lose, to gain the whole world and lose his soul. I agree. So it's very, very important that we get this right. And here's why I believe what I believe. Yeah. In a minute, I know you've got to go in a minute. No problem. You know, even when I was reading this, when I was born, my parents, you know, they're Christians. They, you know, they believe. I understand. Whatever, I understand. But, yeah. But you have to make that choice yourself. I basically. have to make that choice yeah. myself. At some point, I didn't even believe any of these. Uh -huh. But I had, I had what is called an encounter because there's a call of God in my life. I had an uh -huh. encounter. Yeah. And when God opened my eyes, yeah, I began to read the Bible. Uh -huh. I gave my life. Uh -huh. I surrendered my life uh -huh. to God to the call of God. Yeah. And when I when I surrendered my life, yeah, began to read the Bible. Uh -huh. God began to give me understanding of scriptures. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm able to see things in the Bible that not many people can see. Uh -huh. But not only that, yeah. after I gave my life to God, uh -huh. He also gave me a gift uh -huh. whereby I had a prophetic gift. Okay. I will be able to see people and tell them something about their life. Uh -huh. For example, my mother. Uh -huh. One day I was just there and I saw my mother. Uh -huh. like, a, some, like, a, like a disease. Uh -huh. in, her, in her stomach, in her chest, in everything. Uh -huh. when, I when I woke up, I said to her, I said to her, she was sitting beside me. Uh -huh. I just saw you. You had some this uh -huh. disease in your throat, everything. Yeah. And maybe not, maybe a month from that, she was diagnosed of cancer of the throat, uh -huh. the lungs, yeah, in the stomach, stage uh -huh. four. Mm -hmm. There were so many other miracles after that. Okay. Yeah, but my life began like uh -huh. a progressive. Uh -huh. Signs and wonder from God, which is what Jesus Christ promised. Uh -huh. He said, Whosoever shall believe in me, yeah, these we'll, signs we'll do shall things. also follow him. And also they will do they will do things that are greater than what Jesus has done. They, they will do greater have things. Have you ever have you done anything greater than Jesus has done? I mean, this is the promise let, of the let, Bible. Let, no. Yeah. False prophets, false no, prophets, hold, hold can, they, can they perform miracles and show signs? They can perform, but Jesus Christ was not even talking about miracles as greater things than him, because nobody can do any greater miracles than Christ. But the Bible says, what, whoever what believes in me about, will do you know, greater Je things than me. Greater things than me, Yeah. Jesus, Yeah. with all the signs and wonders, Yeah. he could not convert the nations. Uh -huh. But Paul, see the thing that, is, that's, yeah, hold, hold, see, hold on, 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 let me finish, okay. let me land. No problem, no problem. God uh -huh. doesn't care about the signs and wonders. Uh -huh. God is interested in the soul of man. But, but you just talked about signs and wonders. But and you and you gave it a lot hold of on, importance. Hold on, no, I'm saying. Hold but on. God doesn't hold care on. about it. Signs and wonders. And false are, so, and, so, and false on, prophets on, can on, and false prophets can bring signs on, and wonders. Hold on, hold on. Let, yeah. let's, let's not go into rabbit uh, holes. Yeah. Signs and wonders are just to draw attention to say this is from God or whatever, uh -huh. right? What God is interested is in the soul of man. Uh -huh. I just mentioned, I said to Jesus Christ, said, yeah. what does it profit a man to gain the whole world uh -huh. and lose his soul? Yes. God is interested about the soul of man. So uh -huh. when he was saying greater things shall you do, yeah. he's not talking about the old signs and wonders. That's nothing to him. It's uh -huh. the souls of men, his prophets, his disciples, uh -huh. converted nations, uh -huh. transformed them, their lives. Uh -huh. That's what God is interested in. In the eyes of God, that's greater than any miracle. Okay. See, the thing is, I, I would still say, all you've done here is you interpret things according to your belief. Do you believe Jesus is God? Do I believe Jesus is God? Yeah. Absolutely. Because the Bible tells you so. Okay, I'd be interested to know where does it tell you that he's God? You already read it. You will not agree with it. You already read it. Uh -huh. Micah 5.2. You already read Isaiah. You also read... But, but Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6 said, and he will be called the everlasting father. Yeah. Was Jesus the everlasting father? Was he ever called the everlasting father? Can you believe as a Christian that the second, part, second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, is the father? Bring in Colossians 1. Uh -huh. Colossians 1. No, no. But the, the point is, you let, let, let me, let uh, you, let's use the Bible to interpret okay. it. But can we can can you call Jesus the everlasting Father? Let me show you. Uh -huh. Colossians one, uh -huh. verse sixteen. Uh -huh. And who wrote Colossians? Hmm? Who wrote Colossians? It is Paul. Paul was his, he was his apostle. You say he's not, but that's like I said. Uh -huh. You can always argue who wrote, okay. who wrote more. Okay. Colossians one. Colossians one. Verse sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. And by, for for by him 
were all things created that are in okay. heaven. Let's go uh, a, few, a few chapter, um, a few verses before that. Okay, so, 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 say 14. so from, from 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Who is he talking about? Okay. Paul, Paul is talking about Jesus. Okay. All right. okay. If Paul is an authority, yes. okay. even the forgiveness of sins, for in who is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn of every creature. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is the firstborn of every creature. Re read on. No, no, no. I, I, read no. on. I will explain to you because I will explain to you what. Okay, I, but no. is Jesus the firstborn of every creature? What does firstborn mean? It means the, the, we, the first one of what? We talked about it already. No, the first one of what? The firstborn actually is talking about is the inheritor. Inheritor. Because no, no. Christ fulfilled every law. Look, here it's saying, it's saying, according to Paul, that Jesus is the firstborn of every creature. Read on, read on. So read he's on. from amongst the creatures. Read, read on, read he's on. amongst the creation, read. but he's the firstborn. Read on, read on, read on. You get, that's why you get confused uh, if you I'm if not you confused. Try, if you sidetrack. Uh, read on. For by him, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be from thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Stop. Hence what I told you. So stop. Yeah. So all things. Yeah. We are, thank you. Thank you for reading that. No problem. All things were created by, by him, Jesus Christ. And for him. And for him. That's what I told you. I told you this Greek philosophical belief that God is so distant that he has to have an intercessor between him and man to fulfill the roles, to create, to judge, to intercede, to die for the sins, because you cannot worship God directly. That's why you have to call on the name of Jesus. This so is why do you believe in a prophet? I believe in a prophet. Prophets are people who receive revelation. Why didn't he come to you directly? Let me tell you. A, a messenger, a prophet, is someone who is chosen by God from amongst mankind to deliver a message. But the messenger or the prophet is not God. Is not, and is not, and is Why not, does and he is have not, to choose a prophet? Why doesn't he come to you directly as your God? Isn't it the same person that created you? Uh -huh. Why didn't he come to you directly? Why does he have to choose some guy to come give you the message? So, see, the thing is, if you're going to, are you trying to compare that God choosing a human being as a messenger mm -hmm. to establish the evidence against his creation, comparing it to God having to have someone to create for him, to judge for him, to, to die for him, that you cannot worship God directly. There has to be an intercessor. See, even here, it says the firstborn of creation. Of pre creation. If you understood what, yeah. that, what that script that if, verse if, means. If you understand how your Christian belief necessitates it, how you understand it. Mm. See, look, no, let, let me just... I'm, I'm going to say something, Jesus, I mean the Quran is very clear, mm. Jesus says Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum hadha sirat mustaqim. The Quran says that Jesus said that verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord, mm. so worship him, that is the straight path. So Quran is very clear that Jesus was no more than a messenger sent to deliver a message. But Have you had any evidence of God? account of God? Yes. What was it? We'll come to that. But even according to the, the Bible, Jesus had a God. Mm -hmm. Jesus worshipped God. Jesus was sent by God. Jesus, according to the Bible, he had no authority except which God gave him. When he performed miracles, he said, of my own self, I can do nothing. Absolutely. So for this, it shows us clearly that Jesus was not God, and he never considered himself to be God. And I understand, I understand what your question yeah. is. Your question is... How it's not a question, we, it's a statement. It's a statement, <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. How can somebody who claims to be God, then, then is subject to God at the same time? He had a God. He, you know, yeah. uh, the, the Gospel according to John, chapter yeah. 17, verse 3, yeah. Jesus is addressing the Father. He yeah. said, this is life eternal, yeah. that they may know you the only true God yes. and Jesus who you have sent. Yes. Yes. So you agree with that? So Jesus so believed... Do you know, do you know that yeah. um, John 16? Thomas, Thomas, Philip. Uh, Philip I think it's said, John 28. What? John 28, I believe. No, no, no. Yeah. John, okay, it's John 6, 14 or 16. Okay. So Philip said to him, show us the Father. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. You know that verse. And he says that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. 
uh, is there any other man can in you see history? Can you see God and live? Is there any other man in history that can say that? The problem is, I don't believe he said it. You see, the problem you get into a spiral. That's the problem. No, it's not because the thing it's is that you that never believe is, any word that you believe but, is but corrupted. But it's even, hard to believe. But even 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 when even when the Bible says that no one can see God and live, then you can't bring this and say that whoever seen me has seen the Father. You, you understand me, the problem. Let me let me show you yeah. what in Philippians, yeah, yeah, in Philippians saying that although being God, he took on the flesh. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And empty themselves. Yes, yes. Let me show you how Trinity, how Trinity works. Uh, if you have a bottle of water, yeah. Okay. So imagine, imagine a, sea, a river, yeah. Can I, can I just say something? So, let, hold on, hold on. Let me. Let me Whatever give you, example you give, it will never explain the Trinity. Never explain it to you. Yeah. Explain no, explain Trinity the Trinity. Trinity. Carry on, and I'll, I'll tell you the problems with every example you give. Do you know that we are triune in nature? Do you believe you are triune in nature? You're going to say body, spirit, and soul. I know you, I know, you know those things. Is, is the body complete, fully me? No. Or is it part? Is the, the body, is it fully me or part of me? The body, there's three, three, three parts. Three parts. Three parts. That really make up you. Uh, and uh, Is there three parts that make up God? Do you believe the Father is part, the Son is part, the Holy Spirit is part? No. no. The Father, the Father is the fully Father God. Is God. Yeah. The Son. The word. Yeah, is God. Is God? Yeah, is in the Father, and the Word and the Spirit is in the Father. So you under you, do you understand why your example of me being a, a according to you a body, a spirit, and a soul cannot work? Because these are all parts of me. But you don't believe the the Father is part of God. You don't believe the Son is part of God. You don't believe you believe the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God. All these free are, where does are the not. Holy Spirit, where is where does the Holy? You know, when Jesus Christ said, "I will," the Spirit will come to you, the Comforter. Yeah. He proceeds from the Father. That word proceeds is actually come from the Father. It's not coming. It's not coming from uh, the Father said to him. Oh yeah, go and. No, it's according, actually according, from, according to from you. The Father. According to you. Can it, so. Let me let me give yeah. you an example of that the river that I told you about and then yeah. say. Yeah. So imagine a river. Yes, sir. And I take a bottle. Yes. A bottle, empty bottle. Yes. And I collect water from that river. Yes. What do I have in that bottle? You have water, H2O. But it's the same. It's the same as the one in the river, right? It's just that it's now taking a different is platform, it, right? Is there less water in the river now? Hmm? Is there less water in the river now? No. The water, there isn't less water in the even, river. Even by a small amount. Because the river is ever, ever, ever flowing, right? Okay, but the water there, has it been dis diminished? Even by a small it, amount? It so it's exactly the same amount? Yeah, exactly, because the river is ever flowing. No, it's not possible. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> the river is ever flowing, you know that. So that, that amount in the bottle hasn't been, that amount in the bottle hasn't been taken out of the river? It's been taken out, but it's already, come, it's already flowing back Okay, that, that mass which came down from the mountains, which forms streams, which became a river and leads to the sea, has it been, it's, it's a massive amount beyond our comprehension. Has it been diminished by the amount of water in the bottle? That, that I took out. You, it that, hasn't been diminished let because me, the river let is me tell you, let, me tell you, let me tell you, look, I believe you understand what I'm saying, but you know it's problematic for your belief in the Trinity because you cannot believe the Holy Spirit proceeding from God has taken something out of God. You have to believe that this is fully God and this amount, Okay, this, this, this water in the bottle, is it fully water? As in, this, this, this includes all the water on the earth? It's, no, it doesn't. It's, it's water and it does exactly the same thing that the water in the river. But it's, it's, a minute, it's a minute percentage of the water in the world, isn't it? So, so do you believe the Holy Spirit, when it came out from the Father, it was only part no, of God? Not, not the Holy Spirit, you're talking about Jesus yeah. Christ, the yeah, flesh, yeah. the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man, because the man, yeah. when, he, when he took on flesh, yeah. what he does... Do you, do you understand limited... my point when you take water out of a, out of a, a mass? Even though it's a small amount, this but, water has been dimish, diminished, me, and me, this water here is not the full water. But you believe the Father, when the Holy Spirit proceeded forth from him, 
the Father is not the, still not the Holy Spirit. Fully I'm, not God. The, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Because okay. Jesus Christ, we're talking about the flesh. He, he's the, begotten from the Father and the, and the eternally begotten and the Holy Spirit proceeded from. Let me give you this perfect example. You know, I have a Facebook account. It's an, it's an imperfect example, yeah. I have, I, yeah. A more better example. I have a Facebook okay. account. So that example wasn't good enough? It's good enough. The problem was me. It's, it's, good, <laughs> it's good enough. It's good enough. <laughs> okay. Well, let, me, let me give you another one. Yes. Sir. I have a Facebook account, right? Yes. Created a Facebook account, gave it my name. Yeah. Now, did it, will I enter inside the computer? No. I created because it's in a digital form, so I created a digital account to represent me. And that digital account is it fully you? That digital account. That digital account is it fully you? Everything that has, is is when it, I, hold on, hold is on. it you? When I'm communicating with you, is it yeah? you? It's me. No, it's not you. It's, of it's, it's your me. digital account. It's your account. Who is who is using that account? You are, but it's yeah. not you. I'm using that account. If yeah. I, if I, if I, yeah. if you write any message, if you send any abuse yeah. to that mess, to that account, yeah. you're talking to me. Yes. You're abusing me. But the account's not you. See, the, the problem is the problem. Let me just yeah, yeah. let me let me tell you how it relates. Yeah. God, everlasting God. Yeah. Created a physical account, flesh. Yeah. And He is in that flesh, communicating with His creation. Okay. Whatever you say to that flesh, Jesus Christ, whatever you see him, whatever you see him, you're speaking to God because God is in that flesh. That flesh is limited. So, so the flesh is limited, right? So, but the word became flesh. The word took on flesh. No, it yeah? became flesh. It became, yeah, it became, it became yeah, flesh. It Wait, it took on and flesh, the flesh right? died. The flesh died because the flesh is limited. Yeah. Remember, we're talking about. But the word became flesh. Now what's going to happen? We're going to go around in circles. No, you, you're going to go around because you're going to play semantics. No, it it's not semantics. Took, no, it's, he yeah. took on flesh. Uh -huh. He emptied himself, right? He said of the privilege, though, though being God, as in Philippians it says. Is God eternal? Is God eternal? Yeah. God is eternal. Does he change? He never changes. So how did he empty himself of his, of his powers and his attributes? Flesh. When, it, when the flesh, when Christ took on flesh. So he did change? He took on, no. So he's because not eternal. In the spirit, yeah. as a spirit being, yeah. he never changes. So what, but when he took on flesh, yeah? Uh, when he took on there, flesh. There are people who obviously they play semantics with words. Mm. But words have meaning. It has meaning. When you say that God is eternal yeah. and he doesn't change, yeah. but then you tell, you tell someone that he emptied himself. And he emptied himself, but he was still fully God. When he took on flesh, yeah? Yeah. When yeah. Jesus Christ took on flesh. Yes. Once you take on this flesh, uh, what you've done, you yeah. said, okay, I am now a part of this limitation. So God became limited. The flesh is a limited thing. It's weak, right? You said it yourself. Yeah, but, but God, flesh is weak, right? And was God limited inside that flesh? Christ said, when, what did Christ say? He says, I mean, you can, a, you can answer my question or you can say something. Was God limited inside that flesh? Jesus Christ. Was God limited inside Hold that on. flesh? Jesus Christ, as yeah. a man, we're talking yeah. about because... You know you can't say yes and you can't no, say no. I, I would, I would say, because you have to understand uh, from my perspective. Uh, you might want to say your perspective, but it's not, what I'm, it's not my perspective. I mean, you can right? just say yes or no. Was God limited inside Jesus? Jesus Christ, as yeah. a man, yeah. was limited, yes. Jesus Christ, as a man, because he was a man. He did not come as... He did not come as no, no, I didn't. I, I didn't ask that. He came as he came as a man, right? Yeah, but he was what, born. He was born. But, but right? you but you said God was inside that man, dwelled inside that man. Yes. Was God limited inside Jesus? Was God limited inside Jesus? Yeah. The man could only do like, according, the man. According to the Bible, yes. After Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, yes. and he went into the wilderness, mm -hmm. and he stayed in the wilderness, and he was tempted by the devil. Yeah. Who was tempted? Jesus Christ. Not God. The man was tempted because the man is limited. The man is weak. The flesh is weak. Okay. What does the Bible say to you? It says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is what? Completed. You know the Bible. No, I don't know this verse. <laughs> yeah. Because very, you know the Bible. Uh -huh. So he's trying to tell you that the spirit. Uh, but Jesus, Jesus said this referring to the disciples when they were sleeping. Oh, you know that verse. I know. Yeah. I can't remember the exact word. Yeah. Honestly, I can't remember the exact word. Yeah. But this is. But Jesus wasn't talking about 
God's spirit here. He was no, talking. No, 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 he was talking no, about the no, disciples yeah, sleeping. The, 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 yeah, the disciples sleeping. So this yeah. got nothing to do. But so that's why I'm, I'm trying to tell you that the flesh yeah. is a weak thing. The flesh, yeah. Yeah. The flesh has all the limitations you can imagine, and it's weak. So, so when Jesus Christ came, so the flesh, the created flesh of Jesus, limited the powers of God. It's not that he limits. He basically he. That word empty. Of, of my that own he, self, I, of my own self, I can do nothing. He, he, he said yes, that he gave he uh -huh. gave up the privilege of God, the divine, the divinity. So that do you so, know why? Do you know why? Okay, so he, so he wasn't fully God. Jesus Christ, the flesh. He, he wasn't. To, he wasn't fully God. Man, yeah? yeah, we have to talk about the man because you have to understand this. But Otherwise, you, you're mistaken. No, no, you, you have a concept. Yes. You have a concept oh. which has been taught to you by Christianity and by the church. It's not taught to me. Okay. I'm saying it is, but anyway, you have a concept which is illogical, unreasonable. You can't say that God is all-powerful, but then he became limited in, in a man's body. When he, when he took on flesh, uh -huh. basically... Whoever, whoever he, has seen me has seen the Father. But, is that statement referring to fully the Father or part of the Father? Or a limited Father? Let me tell you why. Let me tell because you why. They, they saw the flesh of Jesus. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why. I and the Father are one. Let me tell you why. Is this, is this talking about let the me, limited let me, flesh? Let me tell yeah. you why yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. could not live yeah. as God uh -huh. and then fulfill what He came to do. Because God can never die. Because mm -hmm. God can never die. He's eternal. Not, yeah. Not, not, not just. Not just. Jesus Christ had to take yeah. on the flesh. Take Wh on the flesh. Which is Adam, which is limited. The descendant of Adam. Yeah. He didn't have so to. That he this is your fulfill, belief. So that he will fulfill the law as a man. Uh -huh. If he fulfill the law as God, then he had, then then that's negating what he came to do. He came to fulfill the law as a man, so that so, once so, you believe, so, in so him, he wa so he wasn't fully God then at that time. I'm talking about the, the flesh, yeah. the flesh. You yeah. have to separate the two. Okay, but so when but you but, have to but when the two. But, but when you made the statement, yeah. who, whoever has seen me yeah. has seen the Father. Yeah. When to you said it was Thomas, when you said Thomas asked Philip, him that question, Philip. oh Philip, sorry, when you said Philip asked this question and Jesus said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, what did they see? They saw the flesh. They saw, the, but what did they, uh, what did, what did, who were they speaking to? When Jesus Christ, Jesus. Was, what did I say to you about the Facebook, my Facebook account? If you're speaking to my Facebook account, you're speaking to me. No. So, but are you a Facebook mm -hmm. account? Mm -hmm. Are you a Facebook account? I'm the one using it. So you're, you're, you have, use, you're using it. So, yes. it, so it exists. I created it. It exists. It's, it's me in it. It's me using it. Yeah. So, but it's separate. If if but it's separate from you. It's separate from you. Huh? It's separate from you. It's not well, you. You're talking to me. But it's not you. If you abuse, if you send abuse to my no, account, or who are you? I'm, I'm using the Facebook as a means to talk to you. But the Facebook account is never you. No, no one would believe this except a mad okay. person. So if I do, yeah. if I if I do a Zoom meeting with you, are yeah. you are you looking at me? I'm looking at you, but the computer screen is not you. <laughs> no, the image that you're seeing is it me? Yes, but the image is not you. It's the image of you. The yeah. computer is giving you the image, but you're speaking to me. Is is the computer is the computer fully you? What huh? well, is in the Zoom meeting? Is the computer fully you? Huh? No, the computer is not me. But the image that you're seeing is in, is in my image. So Jesus is not. You're not actually touching me. But so you're Jesus me, is not. Right? So if you use that example, yes, the computer is not fully you. Therefore, not Jesus the, not is the not. Computer, not the therefore, image Jesus, that you see. There, Jesus is not fully God. No, when I'm talking about yeah. the Zoom meeting. Yeah. If I'm doing a Zoom meeting yeah. with you, yeah. you see me. Uh -huh. But it's like a reflection of. You're not actually uh -huh. touching me, right? Yes. But you're seeing my image. Uh -huh. But you speak, and you're speaking to me. So, right? You can make your last point. I'm going to finish <laughs> yeah. now. Because yeah. this is not going anywhere. I, it's, it's not. But the, yeah. the last point is. Yeah. Like I said to you, yeah, I became a believer because of my encounter with God, uh -huh. not because oh, you can do many research, you can read a lot of things you want to read, okay, and you can. I became, but you know there's, there's, hold on, hold on, there's let me, let me yeah. finish. This okay, point. yeah, I became a believer because of my encounter with God and what God began uh -huh. to began to do in my life and in around around the lives of the people that I know that also put their faith in Him. But that's 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 contradiction because you because. You, 
We agreed that false prophets can also perform miracles. Hmm? No, 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 I'm not talking about just miracles. I'm not talking about miracles. Or, or saying, signs, signs and wonders. Signs and false, wonders. false prophets can perform signs. But the Transformation is, of people's okay, lives. My okay, brother. Okay. But my brother. My uh, brother. Uh, uh, yeah? Do you know there's Hindus can say the same thing? Do you know there's they, Muslims who can say the same thing? They can say thing? whatever they want. No, no, no. They can but, say whatever they want. Then you can say whatever you want. Evidence. But, but evidence is facts. Yeah, yeah. No. And God... The, no, but you're, when, not, you're when, not talking evidence. Christ. You're, you're talking your personal experience. Christ And says, when I say someone else can have that... You, you said your conclusion is because of your personal, your you, personal experience, yeah. you know this is true. And but, when I said a but, Hindu can have that personal what, experience, you know the personal a Buddhist can have that. With the then you said evidence. The personal but experience doesn't, matches, but it doesn't, with it doesn't the book. Match, but it doesn't, right? yours doesn't match with the book. How not? How come not? Because Jesus Christ says, because Jesus if said you believe in me, he had his own God. No? Jesus had a God and he worshipped God. Here, O Israel, the Lord, our well, God, not, is one that, Lord. That's not, that's not, yeah. that's not, that's not, I said Jesus Christ said, the personal experience that we have, yeah. Jesus Christ prophesied. He said, if you believe in me, yeah. I will manifest to you. I am a father, we will manifest to you. Uh -huh. And these things will follow those that believe in me. Uh -huh. Speak, speaking in tongues, yeah, uh -huh. a lot of things he named. And I have witnessed but all the, those but things. But the thing is, the thing is, other people have this, and then you say, go back to the evidence. Hmm? Yes. But, but the evidence is Jesus. Look, the main evidence we mentioned is Jesus said, here or Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He never said the Lord our God is a Trinity. No, that's not that's not. Jesus that said, "This no, is this no. is life eternal that they may know you, the only true God, yeah. and Jesus Christ who you have sent." But and the main evidence is, six hundred years after Jesus, another messenger came with a book which is been preserved, explaining to you who Jesus is. So uh, he contradicts what Jesus Christ says. But to me, uh, Jesus Christ is the prophet that is coming back to rule the earth, right? Yes. That means Accord, that, he, that, means that according to Quran and Sunnah, he takes precedence in the line, in the eyes of God. So I no, will follow whatever he says. No, right? because when Jesus comes back, he will follow the Quran and Sunnah. But yeah. everything that you speak is a yeah. contradiction to what Jesus Christ taught. So how am I going to believe you okay. and not Christ? Because I, I showed you or I showed you already examples from the Old Testament mm. to show you it wasn't the Word of God. I showed you examples from the New Testament where they misuse the Old Testament. Anyway, sir. Anyway, it's been, it's been, it's been Thank lovely, you very much. But trust me, yeah. do, do, open your heart, open your mind. I have, because, alhamdulillah. Like I said, like I said I if have. we get this wrong... Yeah, I agree. That's why we're calling you to Islam. But anyway, Anyways, thank you for your time. Been, thank it, you. It was a very so, nice conversation. I'm going to let you go. I want to ask you one question. What's the takeaway? What have you taken away from this conversation? What I've taken away... I've taken away that it's good that he does his studies. I understand that he does it and it's good do to you do you respect his studies though? I right? respect his it's studies. Good. It's okay. good. But he's, I'm just he's, waiting for but. He's diligent. <laughs> huh? But. But. So it yes. does everything. <laughs> as soon as you say but, go on, he's, uh, he's just waiting for but. So yeah. No, he's, he's very diligent in his study and it's good. It's good if you want to find the truth. You have to, as long as you're doing it to Has find out the truth. Has he found the truth? It depends on how what is what is concept is perception. You've heard this concept. You've concept is God is one. If you're just worship doing it, just him alone. Do, if you're just yeah. doing your research, yeah. just to do arguments, then you're not doing it with a with a pure heart. But if you're doing your research to actually say, I might actually there might be some truth in this. If there is, I want to know. Then it's good. But wouldn't the truth stand out over falsehood? He's looking into it, yeah. regardless of his intentions. Yeah. I'm gonna move back from the conversation. No, no, no you're in the conversation because I want to ask you what your takeaway is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm a stirrer. I know yeah. you guys, the conversation is finished. We're going to finish it. You guys go yeah. your separate ways. Yeah. But I just want to understand, like, you guys spend a good amount of time. Yeah, good amount. <laughs> and then what's the takeaway? Does it make sense? Yeah, I understand. Well, well, after an hour and a half, like, what is it? You like, guys, he spoke, you spoke. Was it an hour and a half? It was, it was a good amount of time, yeah. Probably I hope I didn't delay you. Probably more than that. Really? Wow. My, my takeaway is, I get, I get lost in that. the gentleman, I appreciated the conversation. He was polite. There was no abuse. It was a good conversation. Mm. But with all due respect, I believe you're upon misguidance. And if you die in that state, then you're doomed. That's, that's my takeaway. Oh, I thought that the Muslims believe that even Christians can go to heaven as well. No. No, not no? at no. no. Okay. That's good. And what is your takeaway from our conversation? I haven't seen the full of it. Oh, I respect it. the fact that you guys have had a good conversation. I would say that, look, you guys seem to have both have knowledge on your children's subjects. 
but how has the knowledge helped you? I obviously sympathize with this brother and I agree that inshallah he's upon the truth and he's a person and whoever believes in monotheism because the thing is the main thing he wants to teach you I don't think you took away what's the main message of Islam? I understand where he's coming from no no what's the main message of Islam? So, the, the main message of Islam is that God is one right? God is one and worship one God right? Yeah. but this is what you believe I'm sure he went into more detail That's do you the, believe in one God? Hmm? I, believe, I believe in one God absolutely but the, my, my main objective is the soul. Where would your soul go if a person dies? If you die, you oh, it. I know 730, isn't go? it? Sorry. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. We're here, every, we're here usually on Saturdays. We can, we're usually here on Saturdays. It'd be nice to continue another again. Sorry, sir. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Huh? He doesn't oh. like talking to the camera. Talk to the camera, say Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khair.